uh, where we were doing, uh, I would say, database software. So list reports, list reports, really boring stuff. And then in 2002, I joined a company, so I'm from Belgium. I joined a, a small company called Ionic Software, which in the history have been acquired by Erdas, then by Intergraph. So I've been working for uh, 10 years in commercial GIS uh, company. And then uh, beginning of this year, I've changed and I've joined uh, Geomatis. It's, uh, it's a company located in south of France, it's a nice place. Uh, and they, they have a lot of uh, components, open source components, and they are building solutions mainly for scientific domain and industrial uh, customers. So it's, it's, a, it's a set of uh, open source components like GeoAPI, GeoToolkit, Constellation, uh, and we have a set of solutions based on those components. Uh, it started also in 2005, so at that time I was still uh, in, in Ionic. Uh, I've worked a lot for the OGC and for ISO, uh, mainly for all cataloging and metadata uh, working groups. Uh, I've been chairing some groups, I've been uh, the editors of some specification, and since 2010 I'm also a member of the OGC architecture board. So that's, that's more or less my, my background. <coughs> So what is a spatial database? I won't explain you really what is spatial database. I suppose you, you know it. But uh, the, the kind of information that you would like to store into a database that could be lo spatially located are, for example, bars or beer, beer location, uh, where you have simply position, latitude, longitude. Or you can have also a box. And all these kind of information do not really require what we call a spatial database. Uh, many databases uh, can store uh, numeric values, and you can do simple operation on, on those uh, on those information, uh, like finding uh, where is uh, the point uh, compared to my position, or things like this. But when you are dealing with more complex information, more complex uh, shapes or uh, more complex uh, discovery operations, uh, you need a specific structure in your database. So a specific way of storing the information and a specific way of uh, doing the query on this information. And to, to, to have efficient queries, you need to build some specific indexes. And that's where you, you really need a special database. So on the market, what are the solutions that exist for a uh, special database? Of course, Oracle, PostGIS, SpecialLite. Uh, but for NoSQL database, there are not a lot of, I would say, real special solutions. Neo4j, CoachDB, and MongoDB have uh, some special extension where you can store some geometries. You can do some sort of filtering on them. But it's not, it was not as, uh, I would say, uh, as powerful as we were looking for. So for that reason, we decided to, to think about a component that could be plugged as a cartridge on more or less any uh, database, any storage. And what, what was required, if you have a NoSQL database, you need to define a special model for storing your information, some operations on those special information, and uh, index those information to have efficient discovery. So we needed to find a way to build those components and be able to plug them into uh, uh, NoSQL uh, components. So we, we build those components, those architecture, and then uh, we, we add also uh, to define what kind of geometry we would like to support. So for this, we, we use JTS, which is a well-known library, and we decided to support all the JTS uh, uh, objects, all the JTS geometries, uh, which is already far more complex than simply a point or, or a box. Then we needed uh, to, to define a set of operations. So either we looked at other special database and copied the operation names to have a kind of uh, compatibility, 
or we uh, looked at what exists as a standard for those spatial operations and those spatial uh, uh, extension. And we decided to use an ISO standard, so SQL MM, which have uh, a specific part about spatial operations. So this is an ISO standard that defines the list of methods and functions that you can apply on a geographic geometry object. So you have a set of transformation <coughs> operation and functions to transform from uh, WKB, from simple text, from GML to a uh, geometry object. And uh, you have also a set of methods that you can apply to your geometry. So to do uh, some uh, discovery about intersects, uh, distance between two points or two objects, uh, to check if an object is, uh, is in another object or contains, and things like this. So all those methods have a standardized name, which means that anyone who would like to implement the same ISO standard would have the same query language. The third component is the index, the spatial index. Uh, and for this, you have a lot of different spatial index that you, could, you can do. Uh, we decided, after some comparisons and some implementation, to uh, implement the Hilbert R3 uh, index. So it's based on the Hilbert curves. Uh, it's a bit more slower for insertion, but it's really faster for, for retrieval of information. Uh, if I have internet access, I can show you a curve text, we had to decide on which NoSQL database we will do the, the, I would the, I would say, the test, on which one we would try to plug our cartridge. And there, uh, you have a lot of choice. Uh, currently, there are more than 150 different uh, NoSQL databases. Uh, there are different paradigms that exist for NoSQL databases. Uh, we, we had to, to choose one which match, uh, I would say, the geospatial requirement. And uh, we really liked the, the, the graph model, because uh, life is, can always be represented as a graph of concept, of components. Uh, but the, the document uh, model was also really matching, for example, all the, the document that you can uh, have in a geospatial domain, like metadata, uh, the files, uh, things like this. So we decided to check in the multimodal databases, if there was one who was using both the graph and the document paradigm. And uh, OrionDB was one who was implementing those two paradigms. And we, we started playing with it. Uh, we, we, we were in contact with the, the CEO of this, uh, the, the company that built OrionDB. And uh, th they were interested in this, this cartridge. So, uh, we use it because it's a mix of graph and document. It's also really fast. It's amazing how fast it can be. Uh, uh, and also, it's, it's a NoSQL, so not only SQL. Uh, there is the SQL layer that you can use to query your database. So it's not a complete change from a re relational model. So someone who is using PostGIS, for example, can easily switch to OrionDB with a spatial cartridge. The change is really small. Uh, and also, it can be used in an embedded database, which is also useful for mobile and things like this. So we took the OrionDB uh, project. Uh, we modified it a bit to allow uh, pluggable components, so we could plug our data cartridge. So we had some development to do on it. Uh, we collaborated a lot, so someone from the company is a committer now on OrionDB. Uh, which is interesting for, for, for us because our work can go into the, the, the project. And uh, of course, it's interesting for them also to have someone on board who manage all the spatial uh, domain. So what we did with the SQL, we uh, modified the code and all the parser uh, layer to allow uh, parsing SQL statement with different operations <coughs> and uh, develop this kind of uh, pluggable adapter to support uh, geospatial function. And that's the kind of query that you can do on a NoSQL database or MDB with the, the spatial cartridge. So you can insert geometry using the operation to create your point, your polygon, your line, things like this. 
and the query is really like uh, what you are doing in PostGIS, for example. So you do select statements, and in the where clause you can use the different methods uh, that you can apply on the geometry object. Uh, the geometry are stored in the database using WKB uh, and are indexed uh, on a file. So the indexed is not stored in the database, in the graph database. At the beginning, we tried to use the graph database also to store the index, uh, which was in some use case interesting. For example, when you have to insert a node, you do not have to rebuild all the, 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 the list. You simply have to insert a node between two other ones, which is in a graph is pretty efficient. But for some other part, it was, it was more difficult. And uh, so we decided to put it away from the, the graph model. Um, other kind of stuff you can do, you have the Java API also in OrianDB means that using Java you can build your own uh, representation of geometry. Uh, here you have three samples, so WKB, JML, and WKB for example. And you can easily uh, execute SQL command using the Java language on OrianDB to insert uh, geometry into the database. Of course we also support the coordinate transformation so you can store your geometry in any uh, SRS uh, in the database and you can transform coordinates. We also have our uh, EPSG database in the graph, so we use it also to do the transformation. Um, yes, other kind of queries, so it's for, for discovery and using uh, method, for example, to do a union or to calculate the distance between two points. So uh, it's really like, like PostGIS, it's more or less the same. But it's a NoSQL database, so it means that you have all the, the, the advantages of a NoSQL database for deployment, cluster deployment, and things like this. Uh, this is the list of operations that you can apply on your, on your geometries. And so after having built these this, uh, this components, uh, we had to select one use case to test it. Uh, we had a list of use cases that we could do or that we would like to do uh, and we, we tested on different use cases. For example, the first one we, we tried is to store raster in the database. So uh, following the ISO 19123 coverage model, we store the raster into the database, which is pretty useful also for the pyramids that are created. Uh, you have also a pretty efficient uh, raster uh, database using this. As I've said, the EPSG database also, 19111, is stored into this uh, graph database, which is easy to embed into an application and easy to, to uh, retrieve uh, transformation, uh, coordinate transformation uh, operations. Uh, as I've said, I've been working with metadata and catalog for a while now, uh, and I've implemented several catalogs uh, in my previous companies and always metadata are a set of documents and they are all related to each other. If you take the, the big picture of what can be done in the, the GIS and I've been involved mainly in Earth observation domain, uh, you have a set of concepts that can be stored into a catalog or a registry and that you always need to, to link together and that you would like to retrieve based on, on some other criteria. So, for example, the big picture is you have data set. So it can be your subservation product, it can be vector, anything like this. You have service, which usually uh, publish those data set. You have collection of data set, also called data, data set series. You have rights on those uh, concepts. You have uh, acquisitions of those data sets that can be either satellite or in-situ sensors, things like this. You have rendering of those data sets, either uh, grid coverage or vector data, you need to render them. Then you have some portrayal rule that you have to store or define somewhere. And more and more you define more semantic because people are, are trying to uh, be more accurate in the description of their metadata. So it's not simply now uh, full text. People are using more and more uh, ontologies and things like this to describe the metadata. So uh, all those concepts are interesting to have in a central catalog or central database. And all those concepts are linked together. 
So data set is acquired by a sensor, data set is uh, gathered into collection, is published through a service. Collection are also published through service. Uh, all of them can be portrayed. Uh, they have also rights that you need to manage on the data set on the service. And of course, semantic can be added to any other concept. So here you really see it's a graph. It's a graph of object. And I've implemented those kind of uh, concept into relational database and you always come into the problem on how to normalize this structure into a relational database. If you're playing with a graph and document database, it's more natural. You do not have to break the structure, you keep it as it is and you can traverse your graph to find whatever you want <coughs> coming from whatever you are. So it's really a really interesting use case. And when you are dealing about semantic, of course, linked data is just a step beyond. Uh, this is really a graph, it's DBpedia, and you see that graph is really a natural model for storing those kind of, of information. Uh, the last use case which was interesting is OpenStreetMap uh, data. Uh, OpenStreetMap model is really a graph. You have node that relates to way, you have way that relates to relation, and uh, when you download, for example, the OSM raw data, it's really a graph of, of object. Uh, so usually people take those data, transform them into a relational database, uh, so they lose the, the original structure. So what we did to, to be able to do some analysis on those data is that we put OSM data directly into the graph database without breaking the original model. So we keep the structure. And I will, I will show you what, what can be done. Okay, so, so this is a simple application viewer. It's not optimized for visualization. It's simply a, a data viewer. This layer is the OSM tile. So uh, here we connect it to the tile server of OSM and we retrieved the, the map. If I hide this one, So what I have on my laptop is a graph database where we have stored the OSM data as it is using the same uh, graph model. And I'm retrieving the data as a graph and I'm applying SLD rendering on the fly. So it's vector data with SLD rendering directly from the database. So you will see, you can find it, it's pretty slow, but I would say that even with retrieving all this information as the original model is pretty fast. So there is no optimization. It's simply taking the graph model of OSM, applying rendering. So it means that the purpose is not for display because if you zoom out, you can see it can be pretty slow because you are retrieving a lot of information. But the purpose is to show that keeping the original model of OSM, you can do data analysis after, which is pretty interesting. And this is using the graph database. It's not so slow. OK, so just a disclaimer to be honest. So the purpose is not to show you how fast it is or it's not, just to say that uh, for uh, data analysis, it's, it's really interesting. So what we've done on Orion DB, as I've said, we have improved the, the component to accept plugins because we didn't want to break the original structure and uh, put our components everywhere. We wanted to have a component where you simply plug this uh, spatial data cartridge in it. Uh, we propose it as a GitHub fork currently. So uh, uh, Orion DB uh, is working on the next release and we will work to align for the next uh, release pretty soon. Uh, and so the, the GraphGIS cartridge has been developed as a DB agnostic. And 
in the in the title of the the, the presentation, I put uh, for graph database between bracket because this could be applied to not graph database also. Uh, the roadmap, I would say, of GraphJS is integrate with future version of RealDB. Uh, work on the query engine for big data management because big data is, is really is really big. Uh, here we have done some tests with OSM on uh, some countries. If we want to load it on the full world, it's a bit more complex. So uh, we, we need to optimize also the, the query part for this. Uh, we would like to test this cartridge on other <coughs> NoSQL database, other candidates. Uh, it could be useful to check. <coughs> Uh, if it works, so what has to be adapted on those components to plug this cartridge in it. Uh, and also validate the deployment in cluster because that's one of the advantage of those NoSQL databases that it can be deployed easily in clusters and to, for example, uh, do some geospatial ch sharding to, to have more uh, performances. Thank you very much. I must admit that the beginning it was really hard. We had at the beginning to change many parts because it was not so stable. It was not uh, done for being uh, extended. Uh, so we, we had a lot of work to do, and that's the reason why we asked to be become a committer into the project because it was a lot of things to change. <coughs> but it was useful for them also. Dot. So, but yes, you're right. It was not as easy as it could have been. OSM database, have you got any use cases of where you get value by walking the graph rather than a, a traditional query? Uh, I would say not yet. The, the purpose of OSM was because it's a big data use case. It's the amount of information. Uh, as I've said, metadata is interesting, but you never reach number of metadata that you have in uh, OSM data. So OSM was mostly to have a large data set of concept to, to test the, the database. Did you have a business requirement where you needed to walk the graph? As, uh, as I said, for the metadata, yes, it's useful. It's useful to, to, to traverse the graph because you have, for example, uh, uh, if you would like, if, if I take the, the slide, you have this structure. And the, the typical use case is I would like a service that provides data acquired by let's say, spot 5, or acquired by a sensor which have a resolution less than this. You do not have always this information into the data set itself. So you need to traverse the graph from the service to the data to the sensor, because you have to go to the last node to find information. Thank you. Uh, what's the name of the project in, in GitHub? Uh, uh, Orient DB? Uh, three, uh, three um, for the for the special cartridge, three or four people. 
it depends on how how we are filled. Yeah. Uh, just to check that I understood correctly, you mentioned geospatial sharding. Do you mean that kind of uh, this data is here, it's on one chart, some other data is there and it's on the other chart? 